Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Natalie, I teach the art of hand balancing and this video is about shoulder tightness in a handstand which I know for some of you is a huge problem on the way to achieve your straight line handstand. Shoulder tightness is a very complex problem because so many muscles and tendons attach here around the joint and sometimes it also depends on your anatomy. But you can really definitely change your shoulder opening quite dramatically, but always bear in mind that it does really take time. Like I'm talking about a year and a half at least before you make significant progress. It really does take time to change the, the alignment and uh, structure of your upper body. I'm going to explain to you now in very simple words without big um, anatomical descriptions of the muscles what happens when you have tight shoulders. First of all, if you would like to try this with me, if you pull the stomach in towards the spine and change nothing in your upper body and torso and you just lift your arm up here, yeah, then you are going to reach a natural stop in your joint. So this is as far as my joint allows me to open my shoulder if I change nothing in my upper back and if I don't change anything in my shoulder, right? So anatomically, this is where it stops for me. Everything else, the rest of the shoulder opening, I achieve by changing the scapula, the positioning of my scapula here in the back by pulling my scapula down and slightly inwards towards the spine. And that is partly mobility and strength that you need to develop. So you need to develop an active and passive flexibility in order to improve your shoulder opening. Then once I have reached, so some people can reach by changing the active and passive flexibility, they can achieve this much and then it still isn't quite enough for the handstand where we want to be here. So that type of shoulder opening then comes or is inhibited from the muscles that join the shoulder joint here to our rib cage. Yeah? So this is best solved by stretching, whereas the scapula and the scapular flexibility is best solved by mobility exercises for the thoracic spine and in order to have a more responsive rib cage and by exercises that, that um, challenge your active flexibility, so everything that sort of pulls your arms back, back and the shoulder blades together and down. This flexibility here, if you are inhibited from here, then this is best solved by stretches that are side stretches, strictly speaking, but that allow you to really also turn yourself into the sides here so that you really feel this part here open. If you do a lot of um, body weight exercises, it's quite likely that here everything around the rotator cuff and especially these connecting muscles get very tight. So. Um, everything that rotates the joint, that stretches your side and that opens you up here through the front is going to help you with that. Now, if shoulder flexibility, for example, um, you see people who can bend more than 180 degrees and that comes from the upper body. Yeah? So when I do these back bends in a handstand, then the rest of the mobility, so this is my, this is joint and scapula together. This is my opening, which is a little bit more than 180. I'm quite lucky with that. Now, if I want to go further, then that's upper body. Yeah, that's rib cage and upper body. So when you really are committed to improving your shoulder flexibility, it's really important that you know what is pulling you back. What is the weakness in your upper body that you have to improve? Yeah, because I see a lot of people just doing these generic opening exercises, whereas what really inhibits you may be here your sides, or maybe you don't even have the strength to pull your scapula down and together. So let's sum it up one more time. You need the mobility here in the shoulder joint that you get by all exercises that really articulate your shoulders in all directions. You need to lengthen the front of the shoulder line with exercises that look like this. You need the active flexibility, the ability to pull the shoulder blades down and together. 
with exercises that pull your arms back and really engage the back, the muscles behind the shoulder blades and underneath. You need to lengthen your sides in case these are the muscles that are pulling your shoulder joint together. And last but not least, you need a very mobile and responsive thoracic spine and, and upper body here. So if you can do this movement and make it very big, you are likely to have a very good shoulder opening. This is it. My knowledge about shoulder opening and handstands for you. If you like this video and you want to become a proper handstand nerd, please have a look at my Vimeo handstand nerd library where you find more in-depth videos about handstands and progressions that really dive in at the deep end of the technical level of hand balancing. Music